exercise for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you help us to be the kind of leaders we ought to be in Jesus' name. And you help us, Lord, to have the vision, the passion, the desire to reproduce this kind of leadership in all the people that are following our leadership in Jesus' name. Bless your people, even at this time again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let me hear your amen. amen. Thank you. God bless you. You can be seated. This time now we're coming to another picture of leadership. And we're coming to leadership as a steward. You remember the song we're singing? Again, don't clap. Just sing along with me. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Everybody sing. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. There is a race I must run. There is a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Keep me wise. Keep me wise, Lord Jesus. Keep me wise. Keep me wise, Lord Jesus. Keep me wise. There's a race I must run. There's a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be wise. Keep me well. Keep me well, keep me well, Lord Jesus, keep me well. There's a race I must run. There's a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be well. Keep me younger, keep me younger. Lord Jesus, keep me young. Keep me young. Lord Jesus, keep me young. There is a race I must run. There are big trees to be won. Give me power every hour to be young now keep me true Amen. As we consider the picture of the leader as a steward, we need the wisdom of God to be a good steward. And we need to remain well, healthy, strong because of the work we need to do. And the Lord wants to renew our strength from day to day. That's why we prayed in our singing, keep us well, keep us young, keep us true. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. We're looking at the leader as a steward. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The New Testament highlights leadership as a ministry of stewardship. The stewardship of resources, the stewardship of the mystery of the gospel, and the stewardship of talents, the stewardship of opportunities, of time, of gifts, and of gifted people for accomplishing the mission of the master. From the parables that the Lord Jesus Christ told, he told us of the householder, or he told us of the one that has the business. And then he gave the resources to his own servants. 
he wanted those resources that is the lord the master he wanted those these resources to be used effectively effectually so as to produce resources we too as leaders as stewards and the lord has given us quite a lot of resources where to manage those resources where to judiciously use those resources where to effectively effectually use those resources you think about those resources the mystery of the gospel itself that the lord had given us and then the talents that we have that we can use for the glory of god the personal talents we have if you begin to think about the talents we have under our leadership in our control I take for example you are an average leader as an average leader you might not have the talent of leading children but god has given you a lot of people having young people and having uh, the desire to reach those people at heart there's a, a person like a professor another one like a lawyer another one like a doctor all these people within is leadership and all those people are given as talents to us you might not be a computer man for example the one that is knowledgeable in computer and electronics he has been given to you as a talent it's now in your hand to be able to use those people judiciously effectively and then those who are to take care of children those who are taking care of youths those who are taking care of women those who are taking care of education those are about a lot of things they can take care on so when we're talking of talents we're not only talking of the talents you personally possess we're talking of the range of talents in the whole church and the gifts in the church and the gifted people in the church the lord has given everyone to you everyone to me so that we can tell them come on come along and go along with us we're doing the work together so we can accomplish the mission of the master again let me remind you that these sessions of leadership they are not sessions for theory they are not sessions for just reading the bible and then just passing on i told you that there is interpretation there is instruction there is information there is inspiration there is impartation and then in your life you know there's illumination too then and i told you that this is a practical session i want you now to begin to think in your own area maybe in your region maybe in your district and maybe in your locality maybe in your state and think of the various people that are there and there are some people there that the government actually could call them when they're thinking about the national conference and they're thinking about national dialogue they can call some of these people come and join the team we we'll want to tap your brain and we we'll want to make use of you so that you give us ideas how we can move the nation forward politically if those people are there lawyers and judges and doctors and engineers and a lot of people and the government of the country is calling them and they're making use of them and they're in your church and you're doing all the work alone by yourself and the talents are given to you the gifts are given to you and we do not know how to manage all those talents the practical session now as we're going on you'll be writing down are there some people there you know them you greet them you fellowship with them you interact with them what can they do in the church what can they contribute to the growth of the church what ideas do they have how will they be able to join hands with you and then you use them as talents in reaching out with the gospel of the lord jesus christ the picture of stewardship emphasizes the responsibility and the accountability of christian leaders steward leaders that is leaders who are stewards stewards who are now to be accountable leaders in the church of the living god must take the time to think of ways and means to develop and fully utilize the god-given potentialities of the people entrusted to them in order to foster growth in the kingdom of god in titus chapter one still reminding ourselves that leaders are referred to as stewards in titus chapter one verse seven for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of god as a steward of god then it says not self-willed not son angry not given to wine no striker not given to filthy looker we understand the bishop is the overseer the overseer is a pastor 
that is the leader appointed by God and given to the people and you must understand he is a steward of God a steward of God in first Peter chapter 4 first Peter chapter 4 from verse 10 as every man has received the gift every man has received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God good stewards of the manifold grace of God as we consider this picture of leadership the steward I divide the message to three parts number one the integrity and transparency of the steward leader the integrity and transparency of the steward leader number two the influence and trust of the steward leader the influence and trust of the steward leader number three the involvement and training by steward leaders involvement and training by steward leaders let me remind you once again as we go along please make sure that you are taking notes and it's not just the notes of what you are hearing not just the notes of the bible passages we're reading but the notes of what the spirit of the lord is telling you as a steward of the mystery of the gospel i come to number one integrity and transparency of the steward leader we're looking at the first kings chapter nine in first kings chapter nine we're reading from verse four as we consider the steward and we consider the integrity the transparency that that leader ought to have first kings chapter 9 verse 4 and if thou wilt walk before me as david thy father walked in integrity of heart and uprightness to do according to all that i commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments then i will establish thy throne the throne of thy kingdom upon israel forever as i promised to david thy father saying there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of israel and the lord tells us here as he told solomon the son of david he said there's one thing i'm expecting from you as a steward appointed as a leader appointed you will have integrity of heart integrity of heart the most important characteristic of the steward leader is integrity think about any steward you can think about joseph in the house of potiphar integrity the resources of the home the resources of potiphar were all committed to his hand and there is something you can tell about joseph you can talk about his integrity another man you can think about is job the resources of the lord has been committed into his hand and he realizes it's not just the material resources his children too he watched over those children he prayed for those children he sacrificed for those children he taught those children he instructed those children he knew this has been given to me as a trust and he had integrity another person you can think about is daniel daniel had integrity and he had innocence and transparency as well and as the lord called all those people and they served the lord and they did what they did in the integrity of their hearts the lord is expecting us to as stewards of the manifold grace of god that will have integrity here is a testimony concerning david we're told in psalm 78 psalm 78 reading verse 72 so he fed them according to integ according to the integrity of his heart and he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands you cannot maintain integrity as a leader if you don't bring all your skills all your ability into the work of the lord uh, the lord has built you up and the lord has actually qualified you and the lord has prepared you for the position that you occupy in the church of the living god when you come to the house of god do you bring all your skills all your ability all your experience all your intelligence all your expertise all your knowledge everything you have got into the work of the lord that's what the lord is expecting that he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands 
we must have integrity and we must have transparency because that is the only way we can lead the people of God. In Hebrews chapter 3, we're reading about another man and the Lord recommended him and commended him because he manifested integrity in the work he did for the Lord. Great work it was. In Hebrews chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and the high priest of a profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. He talks about Christ, but he also spoke about Moses. That Moses was faithful to the Lord in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Inasmuch as he who has builded the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built or builded by some man. But he that built all things is God. And Moses truly, verily, certainly was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after as say uh, we have a moses here and we talk about faithfulness can you begin to think about the work that moses did he brought the children of israel out of the land of egypt that was the overall overarching work he was to do but didn't you do more than that of course he did more than that he gave them the law those people that we could say they could have been lawless why it not for the law that God gave through Moses? We, we could see from the ap approach of the people, attitude of the people, those could, there could be people that had tendency to be lawless, but he gave them the law. And he had a writing ministry too. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And he wrote all that with all the other things that he had to do. And then too, of course, building the tabernacle in the wilderness. And as you read through the description of that tabernacle in chapter 25 of Exodus, all through to chapter 38, 39, and then concluding everything in chapter 40. Uh, look up here for a moment. Now, Moses, do you understand all the details of this uh, tabernacle? and could you build this by yourself now moses where did you get the time to be able to build the tabernacle and to write all those things that you wrote and then to be able to do all the other things so he said i didn't do everything what do you mean you didn't do everything i was just simply a steward and i had bazaliel over there a talent a gift given unto me and then i had some people that the lord gave wisdom to be able to build that and i said you join bazaliel he will be your leader how about all the people that came to fight against the children of israel how could you overcome them oh you said all i had was a rod in my hand i was on the mountain top i raised it up and joshua, joshua come on and then i chose other people you follow joshua you'll be walking along with him I have about all those sacrifices because I see that uh, in the wilderness all the people that sinned you need to make atonement for them Aaron was there and the Levites were there and I gave them their portion to do what are you telling us Moses all I'm telling you is all those people have been given to me as talent I release them to ministry that's the language release the people to ministry be a good steward there is nothing you want to do in that region there's nothing you want to do in that stage that there is some there is no person who can do it there's somebody available there just again we'll come back to the word interact with the people get involved with the people in fact sometimes you might even want to put everything down you want to have a register of the professions that people have and you dispute to them you really want to know your people sometimes you don't even know the names of the people neither do you know their profession what a wonderful thing it will be if you how did moses know that bazaliel was there how did moses know that a builder was there how did moses know that all these other people that they were there he must have been a good steward of the gift of god and uh, it's easy for us to know today and to collect data from our church and to write you have the name there you have the profession there you have the experience there you have the educational background there and you collect all the data and you put everything in the data bank and in these days of a uh, data processing it's very easy you put it in the computer but i don't know 
know how to use the computer do you have to know how to use the computer there are people there that can use the computer give them all the data they feed it into the computer and then you say analyze it for me i want to know the people in this area the people in this area the people in this area uh, there are some people for example in our church and these people in our church they have primary school they have nursery school they have um, they have uh, secondary school and in some of in one of the countries uh, over here in west africa we even have a member that has a university and his university is now reputed as uh, the best in that country and maybe the best in francophone world and all these members are there and you know i'm scratching my head i'm saying we don't have enough youth workers you don't mean that we have people that are establishing schools and they're getting young people together and they're training those young people why don't we have enough uh, youth workers we have them we don't have enough uh, people that are going to lead the children you think so why do we have the people that are establishing the nursery and the parents are bringing their children and those uh, people proprietors and proprietresses of these uh, nursery uh, kindergarten schools they are taking care of them so well more than every other person in the community and and uh, our members recognize their ability and their gift. It's only the pastor and the leader, the overseer, that is the last to recognize their ability. Why don't you approach them? That these people, they know how to do it in the world. And they're training the children. They're even using our outline. And they're using all the knowledge they have got in the church. In their morning assembly and teaching those children. Of course, we have them. The point is, we have not developed ourselves to see that all these people are there. I get the data from them. And through that data, I'm able now to see, you know, instead of making announcement. And we're saying, now, if you want to join the children's section, you want to join the youth section, raise up your hand do i have to do that if i collect all the data i study all the data who are the people that are capable and competent and can handle youth work i see that from my data and they announce brother so and so sister so and so brother so and so sister so and so all those people i mentioned their name please come i need to see you over there and then as they come over here we're coming to another area of communication in leadership depending on the way you communicate with them already you have selected them and you know something about them already ah your brother uh, jonathan yes i see that you have a school and the fellow didn't know you have any information about him because you didn't make a too much noise or announcement you just told the coordinators i need all these names i need this all the people in your church put all the things together please uh, fill this form all those professional people and then because you are calling all these people to oh brother jonathan i see when did you start your school is it just about uh, seven years ago and now you have up to 300 uh, young people and i see that you are now preparing them for a uh, neko waek this is wonderful the lord is saying that uh, the things you have done successfully in that area of work in developing these young people the lord is now putting the mantle of you come and do it in the church and uh, our sister Josephine, uh, thank you very much for responding to the announcement uh, i see that you love children and the children love you too uh, i saw in the paper the other time that you are uh, is it passing out ceremony I, I didn't know that you kindergarten uh, you know proprietresses that you even have this convocation of, i thought it was university alone they did that uh, i'm telling you that challenge me when i read it about you then you bring it out of your bag is this uh, you know the picture of your school and you know sister just finish you, how is it that the pastor has interest in my school to such a point like this well sister the reason i've actually called you is that uh, i appreciate what you are doing and this is going to be a rewardable service to the lord uh, you'll be uh, helping us in the area of children help us to train and develop our children here if we did that we're not just going to be selecting people in the church that don't have any know-how just people that volunteer and raise up their hands when the gifts are there when the talents are there and the people are there and we can easily collect and select them and we're going to make use of them and our churches are going to move forward in jesus name as we talk about integrity the kind of thing that moses had again moses was not intimidated he was not feeling insecure that uh, bazaliel was doing that and let me ask you moses could you raise up this uh, thing tabernacle that uh, bazaliel raised up to all the detail 
that's not my area i'm just to supervise to make sure that i look at the program i've been given by god and everything they are doing actually fits into what god wants us to do the lord has given that to him i release him to the ministry and he's doing it well why do i need to do it myself and that's the lesson we're learning from moses that we as a stewards of god we get all these people and then our integrity will then be associated with number one honesty be honest with your people when you praise them mean it to the very depths of your heart and uh, when you say you appreciate them in the private and in the public mean it to the depths of your heart let there be no insincerity with your appreciation with your people number two is truthfulness truthfulness goes along with integrity then number three trustworthiness and you know what brings a trustworthiness when you give us a promise in the church and you fulfill that promise when you give us a promise in the children's section and you say uh, you know children's section uh, bear with us uh, during this retreat is uh, very very close now but i'm telling you that by, by the time we come to the december retreat you are going to see that your area of work this is what will happen and then they are waiting because you may think that december is very far away december will soon come and you might forget if you're a careless leader if you're a leader that doesn't have integrity but that children's section they are not going to forget and then november is coming and they are telling themselves the pastor said the pastor said the pastor said and then december comes lo and behold as our retreat was last december and last april that's exactly the way the children church and retreat still is and you're going to lose your trustworthiness when you make a promise fulfill that promise be very slow in making a promise so that the ones you make you are really going to meet up and you are going to do it number four that uh, integrity goes along with single-mindedness single-mindedness with high principles you are a principled man you are a principled woman and because of the principle you have you're able to retain your integrity then number five integrity goes along with faithfulness you are faithful to the lord and you are faithful to the people you have been considering faithfulness to the lord that's important you have been considering faithfulness to the word of god that's very important do you know there are people that are faithful to the teaching and the doctrine of the bible but they are not faithful to the people the people accept us as their pastors they accept us as their leader and they believe that we're going to meet their needs and instead of staying with them and meeting their needs and thinking about them and planning for them and they dreaming for them doing everything for them that they will be brought to their full potential we have not done that let's gather up ourselves let's recollect ourselves and let us go through all the things we knew about we ought to do to the people of god for the people of god when we became leaders leaders and then let us now see how to be faithful to the people of god number six innocence innocence uh, goes along with integrity number seven transparency transparency we are transparent before the people after all we are their fathers and their mothers and there is nothing to hide and you want to open up yourself and you want to give yourself to the people very much let's remember that what the lord is looking for in our lives in our leadership style is integrity the kind of integrity that goes along with all these characteristics we have mentioned in job chapter 2 the lord was even testifying concerning job about his integrity and about the fact that he still kept his integrity even though some calamities had been raised by the devil against him in job chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 3 job chapter 2 verse 3 and the lord said unto satan as thou considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man and one that feareth god and is chooseth evil and still he holdeth fast is integrity still he holdeth fast his integrity although thou moves me against him to destroy him without cause holding fast to the integrity in leadership we need to understand it's very easy to be up and doing when you're happy when you're well when everything is coming your way and when the members of the church when they are kind of cooperating with you and you just say this is the best congregation i ever pastored since i came to the church what do you think turned around 
What if some people manifested immaturity? What if some people even opposed you? What if they challenge some of the decisions you have taken? And then you feel so disappointed and so unhappy. And now you are not seeing your hurts. And you're trying to kind of take care of your emotional wound. And because of that, you don't have time for anybody now. I have a lot of problems myself. I have some things, some challenges I'm facing. And these people that even want me to, you know, still be as faithful as ever. As sincere as ever. As busy as ever. As dutiful as ever. They're not even responding to all that I'm doing. And then you lessen your level of integrity. And the God said, have you seen Job? Even though you Satan, you moved me against him to destroy him without cause. And yet he's holding to his integrity. And other people could see that integrity. And it's wonderful when your wife could see your integrity. And when your husband could tell about your integrity. When those who are closest to you, when they could see about your integrity. Look at verse 9. Then said the wife unto him, Thou hast, dost thou still retain thine integrity? Are you still retaining your integrity? Even God knew about Job, he had integrity. And the wife living with him, closest to him, he also knew that the man had integrity. Uh, when the wife can testify to the honesty of the husband, to the trustworthiness of the husband. To the truthfulness of the husband when a wife can say even though she's not talking to people i know my husband she has only one goal only one ambition only one desire i know he's single-minded and he's a man of principles whether i am there or not as his wife i know what he's committed to and i know he's, he has high principles and i know his faithfulness too and i know his innocence i know his transparency and when your wife can tell that, like the wife of Job, I know you have integrity. Job, my husband, what is surprising me is that we have got all these reverses. You know, those who lost only one child, we, we know how, depre how depressed they become. And those who lose just two children out of ten, we know how depressed they could be. And my husband, we've lost all of them. And yet, you are still holding on to your integrity. Cause God and die. When the temptation comes, that you should even drop your level of integrity a little bit. After all, you are justified if you did that. See what has happened to you see your see your health going down and see your children and see the business and see everything you amass and everything you collected together all these years see your life savings everything gone you have reason to disappoint the people at this time you have reason not to be as a person of high principle like you used to be but job said there is no reason for me i've opened my mouth to the lord i'm going to be truthful i'm going to be honest i'm going to be innocent i'm going to be single-minded i'm still going to be worshiping the lord even when the wife yielded to the temptation but please uh, hold on before you condemn the wife uh, you need to understand that all the things that happened in chapter one that woman did not say anything now if uh, you know that happened to anybody today most of the women would have spoken in chapter one but you know she was still patient the children died don't you know the connection don't you know the intimacy between the mother and the children and the woman didn't see anything and then all the sheep and all the asses everything perished and the woman didn't see anything before you blame the woman before you concentrate too much on cause god and die you must go back to chapter one and then she he just she just let job although they were intimate although they were very familiar husband and wife but she didn't say anything negative just left the just left the man like that i know it's a highly principled man i know he's a worshiper of god i know he loves god to the point that you cannot talk to him about that that is an area you cannot touch in this man's life but in chapter 2 look at it now the man had sauce all over boils all over and the woman saw the husband rolling on the ground with pain and then taking some pot shade and scratching himself and then the woman out of pity out of concern said wouldn't it be better for you my husband if you died i don't want you to kill yourself but you know 
if God could do this, maybe he will kill you if you if you cause him. Cause God and die. I cannot bear this pain on you. I could bear the pain on those children and the pain of losing all the country, everything we have got, and the fire coming on, and the building that we spent a lot of resources to build. The wind came and pulled everything down. Did I talk? No, I didn't talk, but this is too much. I'm pitying you, my husband. This pain is too much. Cause God and die and stop all this suffering. And then in verse 10 then but he said unto her thou speakest as one of the foolish women speakers ah but please say uh, look up here because you know uh, there are some people that do not understand we carry integrity also to the family and uh, when this man spoke like this that was the end the woman didn't reply how, do, how could you talk to me like that i'm talking to you that you cause god and die this is my reason the woman kept quiet and the man never said anything negative after this to the woman it was only in this one single verse in chapter 2 the people that spoke after this time just you find from chapter 3 the friends and so after the man had corrected the wife don't talk like that again you are speaking as one of the foolish women in the land what shall we receive good at the hand of god and shall we not receive evil in all this job did not sin with his lips oh lord i'm sorry that i haven't told my husband something like that my husband please i'm sorry keep on with your integrity the lord will see you through uh, the thing we're learning is whatever is happening to us in our personal lives in our families we have brought we have, we have accepted the yoke of ministry upon us and we want to remain in the ministry and keep our integrity and we're going to keep it in jesus name see what leaders with integrity build trust and they build loyalty and they build the foundations of all effective and lasting relationships effective and lasting relationships if there's anything that's important to a leader is building relationship because we need all these brethren in the church the men and the women and the workers and the leaders everybody we need them and so you cannot play with relationship you are building relationship how do you do that by having integrity by being transparent i come to point number two the influence and trust of the steward leader the influence and the trust of the steward leader we come to genesis chapter 39 in genesis chapter 39 i'm reading from verse 4 genesis chapter 39 we're looking at verse 4 and joseph found grace in his sight and served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand and it came to pass from that from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house and joseph for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field and he left all that he had in that he had in joseph's hand and he knew not aught that he had save except the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favored here is a steward and here is a picture of an effective steward a competent steward a faithful steward a steward with integrity we're told about this joseph he found grace in the sight of potiphar and he served potiphar now what was uh, joseph ordinarily i will say he was a slave i was just say about joseph he was a foreigner what else can you say about joseph he was a stranger and a new person here now comes the challenge to us that how do we deal with people who are not from the same tribe with us in the fellowship how do we deal with people who are foreigners they are not even from this nation or from your own nation and there they are and they're like joseph they are available and they could serve you and they are competent and they are capable they are effective if you will put them in the ministry but maybe there's a thought in your mind he's a foreigner he's a stranger he's not from our nation and he's not from this country and he's not from this place but this potiphar what a wise man he was and what a wise person we ought to be in leadership 
and just evaluate people not on the titles they have not whether they are slaves or they are freeborn not whether they are in, the tri they are in our tribe or not in our tribe a stranger, a foreigner, a slave and yet he committed everything into his son I'm thinking that uh, this uh, Potiphar that has all these things that Joseph had to manage, he had had some servants to him. In fact, we know that he had all the servants. And many of those servants had been there before even Joseph came. How do we know that he had all the servants? Uh, I want you to look at uh, that same chapter. We're looking at uh, verse, we're looking at verse uh, 11 in verse 11 and it came to pass after this time that joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within the other men there the other servants there now how is it that this one that just came is the one that is not put there to be in charge well it's a favor of god is a calling of god and we need to be looking for the favor of god in the lives of people have you ever had this kind of dilemma uh, here you are you have uh, a section of the work and this section of a work actually has been suffering what am i going to do i see that uh, this uh, brother that is uh, handling the work he has a good heart and he has a good purpose and he's a very dependable person the only thing is that he has not developed his skills to be effective and competent in this area of work and uh, as i collected my data i see that there's somebody that just came to the church his name is joseph and he's a stranger and he has not been with us in this church here i remember now they gave him a letter from his estate and they said this person is with us he has been with us in our state he's a builder he's a professional person he's a technical person name it he has it all and he has been helping us over here but it so happened that they transferred him to uh, your state now please uh, take care make use of him he's available a humble brother and a serviceable brother indeed would have kept him why it not for the fact that they transferred him and then as he came i got the letter and uh, after you got the letter what did you do with the letter what you normally do you put it in uh, incoming mail in or out but uh, have i seen that you know the pile of in is high and the pile of out is so small and one day after the person had been there for how many months now uh, the fellow just came you were counseling on sunday and the fellow came and said actually i came from the state and my state overseer gave me a letter that i could do this and do that in the state i was you know helping this area helping this area and now that i'm here my family has even joined me now i am available yes i remember uh that kind of letter please wait for me and then you go into your place and then you fish out the letter are you the one they call uh jonathan oluchuku yes i am okay i see the letter here now okay i'll send for which district are you now over here with us i'm in such and such a district i'll send to you and one month has passed two months have passed and uh, one year is almost going and you didn't remember jonathan oluchuku again and eventually one day he came again pastor you said you will send to me you know the pastor is very busy you must pardon me I'll, I'll get at you again what's the name of your coordinator okay let me write it down then you write it down six months again you are not serious with all the talents and all the gifts and all the people all the juices that the lord has given you now even eventually you decide i'm going to make use of this joseph you now have a difficulty from the record i have about this man he can do this work better the whole church is having headache because of the people that are handling the work they are not doing it well but the, your dilemma is how can i change the people that are there how can i bring this foreigner and bring this stranger and bring this new person who is not from this stage and how can i just bring him to be over the people i may just tell him to join them and be under them he is not under them give him what he's able to do and you'll see that that church that area of work will be turned around in jesus name 
That's why we're here. So that we'll begin to discover the things we have not been doing right. And then all these Josephs that are hiding in the, fellow, in the fellowship will bring them, bring them up, lift them up, and put them in position. And then you'll be a leader of influence in Jesus' name. As I talk about influence, can I break it down for you? I'm spelling the word influence. And I'm looking at how the steward leader looks at himself as a leader of influence. You know how to spell it. If you can spell it, um, that is uh, vertically, I-N-F-L-U-E-N-C and E. I inspires people. You inspire people. When you are talking to your people, don't come out dull. You are looking for people that can help in the church. Don't come out dull. Don't sound dull, tired, sleepy. Be excited yourself. When you are talking about something you are calling them to do, and you want the people to come on board and join the people so they can walk along with you, be an enthusiastic man. And be an excited man and be a person that is entirely inspired yourself and then come onto the congregation and announce that area of work and inspire them that everybody feels yet we we'll want to go with it we we'll want to go along with the pastor we're going to do that that's a steward leader of influence and network with people network with people in the days in which we live isolation will not succeed the isolated man is going to be led behind and is going to be at the tail of the queue. It's the person that connects with other people. I know that this is your strong point. This is my weak point. I have a strong point. Where you have a weak point, let's join together. Put our strengths together. Put our knowledge together. And put our abilities together. It is a steward leader that knows the importance of connection, importance of networking with people that is going to succeed in the days in which we live. Another thing is that you, as you are connecting with the people, as you are networking with the people, don't allow any breakage. Don't allow any kind of, uh, any gap between you and the various sections of the work. And the sectional leaders too. Now, if you put down a sectional leader, what have you gained? Because that section, you know, is important. That section is important. That section is important. And a leader over this section, a leader over this section, a leader over this section. If you came on, on the pulpit, and then you put down the leader of that section, what are you doing? You are destroying that section and you want that section to succeed and the church can only be as weak, as strong as the weakest link. I'm thinking about a chain. Now you have a chain here, a chain here, a chain here and they all link together. And there is one of the of one of the links, one of the rings that is very, very weak. The whole chain will be as weak as the weakest point there. That's why strengthen every section. Strengthen every section. Before you make any announcement, before you utter anything, think about it. What I want to say now, how will it affect that section? Will it destroy that section? Will it weaken that section? What am I going to gain if I did that? What will be the profit of the church if I do that? To be a steward leader of influence, network with people. F, focus on progress. Focus on progress. You just want to move ahead. You want to climb the ladder and you are a steward leader and as you are a steward leader you are focusing on progress don't focus on problems problems will always be there problems will always 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 be there and you think about the ministry of moses were well, there not problems yeah there were problems but he focused on progress and you think about joshua a great leader indeed was there any problem anytime you remember Achan? but he dealt with that then he kept on moving focus on progress how about uh, how about david were there problems oh yes there were problems but he focused on progress you see there are people that are too busy mopping the water on the floor they do not have any time to close the faucet what i mean is the tap is running and now the ground is flooded how is the ground flooded like this and then you take a mop in your hand and you're mopping it and you're you are kind of scrubbing so that you can dry the water how about the faucet the tap that is running i'll take care of that later i need to i, I don't like the look of this ground 
it's so wet and it's so dirty what should i do i need to scrub everything while you are scrubbing this one is still running are you not going to make more progress if you change your strategy what feedback are you getting you're doing a lot and you're exercising energy and yet the ground is still wet ah yes i remember now i am not a failure but i've got a feedback the feedback i've got is that my strategy is not right i am concentrating on the problem on the floor and i'm not looking at the other one that is running go and close that one when you close that tap you'll have enough time to be able to scrub the floor and get rid of the water there focus on progress now uh, let me ask you we're all leaders overseers and pastors and teachers here uh, you know sometimes uh, you have uh, let's say a hundred uh, people in the church and these hundred people in the church uh, you have about two people that they are just they are not obeying you it's like uh, they, they want to show you that are you higher than we are when did you come who made you an overseer didn't when they should have picked me before they picked you and they belittle you they look down at you who are you who do you call yourself i've been in this church when were you when were you when did you come to deeper life is it not about 13 years ago i came since uh, 20 years ago and they will not cooperate with you only two people and the rest of the one and the rest of the 198 people they say pastor move on we're moving with you anything you want us to do we are here for you give me any response any challenge i'm going to take it and lo and behold you came to church on sunday morning as you came to church on sunday morning guess the people that sit in front those are the courageous people that challenge your authority and those two people are there and while you are preaching you expect them to be writing they fold their hands like this they are not writing anything you call any reference they're looking at themselves and they are giggling and smiling they started again they cannot preach better than that and then all of a sudden uh -uh, why are these two people like this and then the rest of the, the 98 people you overlook them and neglect them and then these two people we're not going to have rebellion in this church we don't have rebellion how many people they're in the minority can't you look away from them and allow them to be playing their game while you are playing your game you have a greater game to play a kind of game that is going to result in award and reward keep on playing your own game and concentrate on progress and those two people that you know they want to make trouble they want to say that you know they are here and there uh, you know you just neglect them and overlook the problem and I'll say we're moving forward and uh, 98 people said yes amen we're moving forward and two people said no we are not moving forward did i hear there no i didn't hear the 98 yes was shout down the two people i'm talking to you and i'm telling you something that in leadership there will be problems but the way leaders succeed is that we understand you have orientation orientation and then you make up your mind those minority people i'm going to overlook what they're doing or what they are the way they are planning whatever they are planning i know the lord has put me here i am going to focus on on what on progress l he leads people to their full potential he leads people to their full potential that is the steward leader as we're leading the people of god understand what can this person do is he doing his very best and you know if you're thinking like that you're going to actually you're going to do some revolutionary things and let me tell you what i mean by revolutionary things uh, many many years ago we had a brother he was uh, my secretary and that time there wasn't much to do all he was doing was typing and uh, you know he would type and no, not many males were coming in and then we had we had need that we wanted to have uh, somebody in Calabar that will be the overseer in river state and i said my brother uh, please i can easily get somebody to type for me i was talking at the university then all the bible study outlines i had i could take it to my department and somebody will type for me i could replace you as a typist as a secretary but i need somebody in Calabar. and then i sent uh, the brother there and he did a great work there as an overseer you want to develop people to their full potentials i remember one uh, one brother uh, he was uh, driving me and you know he will drive me to the north and uh, to jaws and to Cardona and to different different places and then as i as we moved around i will listen to him while talking to other drivers maybe drivers he will be speaking outside to them and uh, we didn't have overseers over there and he was just simply driver normal good driver and i called him and i said my brother uh, you are going to do something 
something and then we sent him to the north from driver he was promoted to be an overseer why can't we do that uh, you know the problem that uh, you know the people are in the new testament the problem is this they were all filled with the holy ghost and the apostles didn't know what to do with people that were filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, when you are praying for the power of God in your church, you are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and God answers the prayer, and everybody became filled with the Holy Spirit, the people were there, they didn't know what to do. And only the 12 people were preaching and doing things, and uh, they were also distributing food, and they were the, the people were also in their vetting committee. If they brought money, they brought to the apostles' feet, and they did everything. But by the time they got to a particular level, the uh, Grecians were murmuring. They are not taking care of our women. Okay, we will solve that problem. So please be patient. How are we going to solve the problem? The people that will distribute food, let us look for men full of the Holy Ghost. And full of faith and people who are honest and of good report whom we may appoint over this business you know what they did they put uh, the prospective evangelists to be distributing food and they put the prospective prophets and pastors and teachers and apostles they put them to be distributing food how do you think about it we have some things to carry the you know the benches at the back there uh, is disturbing us or want somebody who wants some people to carry them and carry them to the other side and then i say please I want to carry the benches over there are there people here that are full of the holy ghost raise up your hand and then you are of honest report and you're full of faith where are the people uh, I have seven one two three four five seven get up please go and carry those benches is that the best they could do are you not going to develop them to their full potential is it only carrying benches and distributing food that these seven people could do eventually they broke the cage and Stephen one of them when he began to pray they looked at his face as the face of an angel and signs and wonders and miracles were done by Stephen and eventually when persecution scattered them out of Jerusalem look at Philip who was the apostles they couldn't get any better job any better assignment for philip except you know the food has come we divide how many in your family five okay i measure five pounds you take is that enough yes sir go how many people do you have i well, only two myself my wife was still waiting for chair okay one two take and go full of the holy ghost that's all they could give them to do can we blame them what are you doing in your places what are you doing who are the people you are putting in charge when the persecution drove them look at philip he came to samaria no choir no usher no security no property no land nothing he began to preach single-handedly and the whole city turned to the lord the lord is telling us that we need to change and we need to understand the people that the Lord has given us. And instead of keeping them down to this small activity here, small activity there, you release them and you lead the people to their full potential. You utilize privileges profitably. The steward leader will utilize privileges profitably. He empathizes with the people. Put yourself in their shoes. Are they suffering so far with them? Have the feeling that they have. And have the understanding that they have. And he negotiates for profit. Negotiates for profit. A leader who is a good steward, he will negotiate for profit. If you look at Joseph eventually, when Pharaoh handed everything over to him, and the people said, all the money is gone and all the uh, and was still hungry he negotiated for profit he said well, you give your land and you give your land to the king to pharaoh and then see connects people with people and people with possibilities a man of influence a leader of influence a steward leader will connect people with people connect people with people and also connect people with possibilities uh, that, that's the real leader you see the possibilities in the lives of the people and you are connecting your people with the possibilities they can have he, he exceeds past performances he exceeds past performances that's the leader of influence and that is a steward leader the influence and the trust of the steward leader that steward leader inspires people networks with people focuses on progress 
leads people to full potential utilizes privileges profitably empathizes with people negotiates for profit he connects people with people and people with possibilities and he exceeds past performances we we'll come to point number three involvement and training by steward leaders involvement and training by steward leaders as we get involved with the people we also see how to train them and in training them we train them to their full potential to be able to do and to be able to achieve what they ought to achieve in john chapter 15 we're reading about the lord jesus christ see what he did and see how he did it john chapter 15 we're looking at verse 15 henceforth i call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his lord doeth do you know there are some leaders the thing that to be a great leader you economize information and you co you conceal information so that the people will not know as much as i know but the lord is saying if we're going to do the work as a good steward of the manifold grace of god and of the gifts the lord has given us don't economize information don't economize the knowledge that you have. Don't conceal the possibilities and the things that could be done. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it you that's the calling we have received and that is how to be a real leader that he is a steward leader in the manifold grace of god and let's look at um, acts of the apostles chapter 18 in acts of the apostles chapter 18 we're reading from verse 24 acts 18 verse 24 and a certain jew named apollos born of alexandria an eloquent man mighty in the scriptures came to ephesus this man was instructed in the way of the lord and being fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord knowing only the baptism of john he was a leader but a limited leader a communicator but a limited communicator and he was a forceful fervent person but was limited in his knowledge and therefore limited in ability and limited in his output and limited in his outreach as well and then in verse 26 he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of the lord more perfectly and that is what we need to do we need to have eagles eyes sharp eyes you are seeing the apollos in your community and you are seeing the upcoming leaders in your community or in your church and you are helping them and you are developing them and you are having some input in their lives if you have some good books you have read give them to read if you have some good cases you have listened to give them to listen to if you have some things that have challenged you give your testimonies to them your desire and your goal and your passion is that you will bring them to their full potential and that's what they did training is the key to reproduction and progress and we need to be a good steward of the people that the lord has given us what does that mean it means we're going to train people who are we going to train seven kinds of people number one train unlikely leaders train unlikely leaders can you think of Timothy? He was an unlikely leader. Timid, backward, easily intimidated, fearful, and very much unsure of himself. He was lacking in self-confidence, and he didn't have a lot of self-esteem. He was an unlikely leader. But you see, Paul, the apostle, could see something in him. That even though all these external emotional things were there, he could be somebody in the kingdom of God. You'll find a lot of people like that too in your church, and they are unlikely leaders.
get interested in them pick up interest in them and reach out to them and see how to train them number two unexpected leaders the unexpected leaders who are they people like jeremiah when the lord called jeremiah and the lord said before you were conceived in the womb when you were conceived in the womb i even knew you and i've ordained you to be a prophet to the nations do you know what jeremiah said jeremiah said but lord i i, I am a child and i cannot speak and unexpected leader he didn't expect that he would be a leader but the lord said don't say i'm a child you will go to the people i'm sending you you see when uh, some people give excuse we just think they have disqualified themselves i thought they could do it but they said they could not do it shouldn't you know more than them you should know the people more than they know themselves and even though they are unexpected leaders like jeremiah you'll pick them up pick up interest in them and see understand them study them and then see how you can really be of a good service to them to make them the people that the lord wants them to be number three the unwilling leaders unwilling leaders and you know there are some uh, people who know they are leaders but they are willing and the reason they are willing is that they are looking too much inwardly they're looking at themselves they're looking at what they think they have they're looking at what they think they don't have they're looking too much at the past and if you're looking too much at the past uh, you see what have i achieved in the past what have i tried in the past and all the things i tried in the past did i ever succeed no i didn't succeed and so i don't want to make a fool of myself i know i cannot do it but pick up those unwilling leaders who can we give us an example of unwilling leaders moses that became a great man a great leader if you look at uh, uh, exodus chapter 4 exodus chapter 4 reading from verse 10 and moses said unto the lord oh my lord i am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. By the way, as we read that verse 10, do you know some things that came before verse 10? Yes, it's like the rod. Throw the rod now, it became a serpent. Pick it up again, it became a rod. That came before verse 10. And yet the man could not pick up himself and know that the Lord can do a lot through me. It's not what I feel about myself. It's the very fact that the Lord has given him the power to walk signs and wonders. Moses, are you ready? No, I'm not ready. What are you waiting for again? All right, put your, put your hand in your bosom. And he did. He became leprous, as white as snow. Put it in again, and it became normal. Are you ready now, Lord? Even those, those miracles are performed, and I understand what you're saying. The signs and the miracles, yet I cannot do it. He was an unwilling leader, and yet you don't want to give up on them. God did not give up on Moses, even when he said, I'm not eloquent. Even since you spoke to me, I've not seen any change. And since you commissioned me, I've not seen any change. And then in verse 11, and the Lord said unto him, who has made man smile? What an encouragement. Who has made the dumb and the deaf or the seen or the blind. Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go. I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Unwilling. But what the Lord is telling us is that number one, we shall pick up those uh, unlikely leaders, Timothys, train them and pick up the unexpected leaders the jeremiah's and train them and pick up the unwilling leaders the moses and train them number four pick up the unknown leaders and train them apollos came to ephesus and then when he did what he did he wasn't known before that time in that area but aquila and priscilla picked them up those unknown that unknown leader and touch them now we come to number five uncompromising leaders that is daniel and the others daniel and the others nehemiah uh, sorry nebuchadnezzar wanted some of the children of uh, the jewish people that came from judah to be trained and then they selected them and they happened to select daniel shadrach meshach and abednego uncompromising leaders uh, when you see somebody and uh, you know somebody is uh, they are reporting him to you and uh, they say he's a troubleshooter he's a troublemaker oh, what's the problem and uh, well the ask for ship is always reporting him or the zona is always reporting him or he's the coordinator they are reporting him to the overseer I, I even want to see this troublemaker they are talking about and then you send for him and uh, then he comes 
I, I hear that you are making trouble in your zone. I hear you are a troublemaker in your district. What's the problem with you? Why are you not cooperating? Sir, it's not because I'm not cooperating. You told us at the fellowship. You said we should start at this time and we should end at this time. And then the people will come and they will not follow the instruction you have given us in the church here at the central church. And then they will drag on and on and on. And then I will say, I will raise up and I say, ah, the pastor told us this is the time we ought to stop. And the way we are doing it now, we are not being obedient. It's because I cannot see the laxity and then keep quiet. That's why they say I'm a troubleshooter. Oh yes, I understand now. This man is like a Daniel, the uncompromising, pick him up and then that's uh, that's an instrument already and you're going to build him up to be a real a real leader and then to, you need wisdom now and the wisdom you need is to say okay come here are you mobile yes i'm mobile if you had the responsibility away from that locality where you are living will you be able to make it by the grace of god all right then you remove him and put him somewhere you solve the problem for these people they don't they have taken the trouble uh, shooter away and the troublemaker they have taken him away and now he's in this other place now he wasn't even house fellowship leader and then you do you need a zonal leader in this area yes i do i'm bringing somewhere to you that man is great you are going to really enjoy him you make him a zonal leader and then you're watching him as he's getting up you make him a coordinator and then these people are saying thank god he got rid of the of the troublemaker then you come to the tuesday leaders meeting one day and then guess who is leading the building the body is this person now become because he has become zonal leader or even coordinator and they look up and say what what happened to troublemaker that he became more promoted among us because the pastor is taking those uncompromising leaders and he's training them that's what we need to do number six the undeserving leaders undeserving leaders was peter undeserving after he had denied the lord those three times no he was not deserving and was peter undeserving when he had said i go a fishing and he led all the others astray to go a fishing with him he was not deserving therefore pick up those peters those simons the undeserving leaders and train them you have some other leaders number seven the uncommon leaders uncommon leaders pick them up and train them who are they they are the pauls when paul was uh, with the jewish religion that man he had uncommon zeal and he went here and went here and went over there and almost you know, destroyed christianity only that on this rock i build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it eventually he was brought in to the church he was born again but the disciples were still afraid of him until barnabas took him up introduced him to them and then barnabas brought him near we'll speak more about that later and he became a trained uncommon leader ah look at this uh, look at this man here that other man there he was in the muslim religion before when he was in the muslim religion he was active aggressive and he could face anybody challenge anybody and he was opposed to christianity and eventually he saw the vision of the lord or somebody witnessed to him or a sickness came upon his family and then became converted now that he has become converted that's an uncommon leader what do many of us do many of us will make him to sit down there and he will sit down for one year for two years for three years until the zeal that he was bringing from his old religion all that zeal would have would have died down and then we teach him how to not have any zeal to be just you know um, like a desical and lazy and not doing anything three years have gone when he came from the other religion and was coming fire and seal at that time when he was converted that's the time to pick him up like paul the apostle the uncommon leader and then show him the gospel and train him so that he can go out with the gospel now you get involved with the people and you train the people and if we do we're going to see great progress in the kingdom of god in jesus name in second timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 we're looking at verse 2 and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit that to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also i know you know that verse but what i'm asking you to do now is to obey that verse the things you have heard of me among many witnesses look up here please then look around those in the front look back those are the many witnesses around you okay look here now 
All the things you are hearing now, among many witnesses, you'll go back and you will commit them to faithful men. Ah, are there faithful men at all in your ministry? Are there faithful women? How many faithful people can you find? Are they up to 10? Are they up to 100? If you're a state overseer and you have about 5,000 people in your state, about 10,000 people in your state, and about 20,000 people in your state, how many of them can you trust as faithful men and faithful women? Do you know their names? Find out. Look for them. Get them. Put their names down. Have a meeting like we're having now. And the things you have heard on this leadership, and the things you have heard on how to train other people and the things you have heard that have encouraged you and that is making you to be stirred up that you want to now do the work of God in a new way that same thing you commit to all these other people how many of them can you actually find now get busy and write the number your region of us here in the language church how many can you find can you find up to 50 can you find up to 100 can you find up to 200 your group coordinator you are coming from lagos here how many can you find your coordinator you are hearing this how many can you find as a coordinator you are in the leadership how many can you find in your section of work the things you have heard who are the people you want to share all these things with the things that you have heard among these many witnesses who are here this same thing you are going to commit to all the people able men faithful men who are all be able to teach others also and remember integrity demands that what you write you will do you will follow through because that is actually the characteristic of the steward the steward has integrity you're reaching it down now i'm going to pass this training i'm going to pass it on to 100 people to 2000 people to 5000 people then integrity demands that you will do it and we will do it in jesus name and god through you is going to raise up great great leaders for the kingdom of god let's rise up and pray to the lord the lord has called you to be a steward a steward must have integrity and transparency as for grace from the lord to grant you honesty thank god you are honest let him deepen and extend increase that honesty truthfulness thank god you are truthful let the lord reaffirm that truthfulness trustworthiness that all these things you are learning that the lord has committed this thing in your hand as a trust you are now a trustee and you want to be trustworthy single-mindedness raising up leader judiciously and profitably doing the work of the lord along with other people and you have high principles lord i want to be a disciplined leader a leader with high principles faithful innocent transparent God is raising you up as a leader of influence. You have influence. As an influential leader, you will inspire people. Your national overseers, region overseers, be a people lover. Don't be a lone ranger. Focus on progress, not on problems. Uh, there may be two people there that are not convinced yet that you should be a leader Do not waste your life on those two three people don't allow the minority to drag you down to their level the majority appreciate you and your leadership go along with them while you are praying that god will help those who are the minority lead people to their full potential make a commitment I'm not happy when I see the people that can do better acting like mediocres. Lord, help me to pour my life into them until they reach their full potential and utilize your privilege profitably. 
empathize with people, sympathize with people, have feeling for people, think the best for them, desire the best for them, plan the best for them, negotiate for profit, connect people with people, and connect people with possibilities. Your people are not failures. Show them the possibilities of ministry before them. And you need to exceed past performances. What number did you write down that you are going to train? You are going to get involved with their growth, their spiritual growth. Did you include some unlikely leaders there? some unexpected leaders there don't bypass them just because you think they're unlikely they're unexpected even some unwilling leaders your heart your mind your desires your passion should still be on them those unwilling leaders they can become like a great Moses in this generation Unknown leaders, God knows them. Those uncompromising leaders, don't be negative to people just because they are reporting them to you that they are uncompromising, they are troubleshooters. See how to develop them, how to train them. Undeserving leaders, they had opportunities before, they lost the opportunity. Give them another chance. And those uncommon leaders, pour your life into them. Train them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new session that we have got now. Thank you because of what you have, have exposed to us on the ministry of the leader as a steward. Thank you for the decisions we have taken, for the things we have written down. We are asking, O oh Lord, that you help us to maintain integrity in Jesus' name. And we will do your work. We will train other people. And we will move your church forward in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.